metric he needs us to get to uh, in order for us to open up. Coming up on Krem2 News at 11 right now, we sit down with Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward on the conversation she's going to have with Governor Jay Inslee tomorrow morning on Spokane, moving on to phase three plus. You know, for us, it, it has been a positive. We're thankful that we've not been impacted very negatively. Idaho business owners speak on their increased business from Washington residents since moving on through phase three and now phase four much quicker. And we've seen another batch of strong thunderstorms this evening. And while that winds down, the rain might yet pick up heading into the weekend. And good evening. Thank you for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Regina on Mayor Nadine Woodward tells us she will meet with Governor Inslee tomorrow morning on what Spokane needs to get to phase three. Right now, Spokane cannot get into that phase, according to Dr. Bob Lutz. But many of you have expressed your concerns that people are spending more time and money in Idaho. And tonight, Woodward confirmed acknowledging Spokane is in fact losing business from people heading to Idaho. Well, we're going to do everything we can, uh, Regina, to get to phase three so that more of our businesses can open up, more of our um, people can get back to work. It is challenging when you're a border county to a state that is opening faster than you and more broadly than, than you are. And that's what we've experienced since the, the very beginning of, of, of COVID when we uh, got to the place where we were opening up our, our economy. And that continues today. We are losing um, people to go to, to Idaho to do business. Our businesses are losing out because of that. And just to recall, in order for Spokane to proceed to phase three, we'll have to see other metrics other than those new cases, such as PPE, how broad and often testing is being done, and the efforts with contact tracing. But in North Idaho today, many businesses are saying they're excited to open their doors up with those looser restrictions. Many say they're welcoming Spokane residents. One Coeur d'Alene business owner says most of his customers have actually been from Washington outside of having different colored license plates. The people we interact with are great. Um, I mean, we're excited when they come over and, you know, bless our community with spending money here. Uh, you know, with that said, I mean, I definitely don't want to see businesses in Washington being negatively impacted by that. Um, also, obviously, that's completely out of our control. So, you know, from our perspective, it's been a good thing. And there's no doubt we've been busier with people from Washington because of this situation. Owner of Cork and Tap in Coeur d'Alene, John Paul Dupin, says the restaurant and bar are taking extra precautions, however, for safety, even though it's not necessarily recommended right now in phase four as well. He says proper sanitization efforts and physical distancing, though, will still be practiced. So with that said, let's look at some coronavirus numbers starting in Spokane. As of today, 10 new cases of today, 802 cases in total so far, 37 deaths, 93 cumulative hospitalizations, and eight people currently hospitalized right now. In the last two weeks, we've seen much more than 250 cases. We would need that 125 number or less to move on to phase three. Now to Idaho's Panhandle region, Kootenai County with 97 cases, Benoit with 10, Bonner with 7. There is an unassigned region with 9 cases. Officials are working to track those down as we speak. Boundary and Shoshone both have 0 cases, so keep it up, guys. In Idaho, we're seeing 0 deaths in all counties as well. And like we just mentioned, Idaho moving on to stage four tomorrow. So we want to break down what that means for the state. Gatherings of 50 or more people are now allowed. Theaters, bars and other venues are also allowed to open up. Large sporting events can operate under limited physical testing protocols. Work from home recommendations will be lifted and you can start visiting senior living centers. Even though Idaho is moving on to stage four, Governor Brad Little reminds us it's not time to forget those social distancing measures. A contract between the city of Spokane and the police guild is up for a vote on Monday. A ballot measure that passed overwhelmingly by Spokane voters last year said negotiations for contracts like this one need to be open to the public, but this one wasn't. Our political reporter Casey Decker asked why. In 2019, nearly 77% of Spokane City voters passed Proposition 1. The measure amended the city's charter to declare all negotiations between the city and various unions for its employees must be public. 
I think that the, the public, frankly, is starved for transparency. The foremost promoter of the measure, Michael Cathcart, who was elected to city council in the same election. He says his expectation was that the proposition would apply to the police guild. In fact, that was part of the messaging uh, that was used to uh, promote the, the measure. But the city had a different interpretation. This has been an ongoing uh, uh, negotiation for three plus years now, and the terms for negotiation are set at the out, outset of negotiation. Uh, so to come back in the middle of the, um, the process is uh, something that both terms, both sides have to agree to do, and it wasn't something that was possible in this case. I, I reject that argument completely. The, the charter measure, or the, the charter amendment specifically did not delineate between ongoing negotiations or new negotiations. There was no reference to that at all. Cathcart says he can accept some gray area in another argument, that the actual negotiation phase was already over and technically the contract was in the mediation phase. But as it stands, the contract is near finalized and will be voted on by the city council on Monday. And it's become a flashpoint for a broader debate about police violence, with many local protesters honing in on the contract as a symbol of insufficient accountability. Had these negotiations been public, uh, I, I really think that there would be um, uh, less concern over this contract at this point in time. What do you think the public might have lost from this particular negotiation not being public? I think had they been public from day one, um, I, I think the, the community support uh, uh, for the independent oversight would, would have been uh, strong enough that I think these negotiations would have wrapped up sooner. If the council rejects the contract, though, there's a chance it would go to arbitration rather than be completely rewritten. And regardless, because it's so overdue, it'll expire at the end of the year and new negotiations will have to start up again very soon. Both the administration and the council expect those discussions would be public. I believe that there is a lot of support in this community to ensure that the next round of negotiations, regardless of this contract, are fully transparent to the public and that everybody gets to know what is being discussed and how it's being discussed. The Police Guild did not respond to a request for comment today. In Spokane, Casey Decker, Krem 2 News. And today, protesters held an 8-minute, 46-second demonstration for George Floyd outside of Spokane City Hall. This was to symbolize how long George Floyd had been held down by Minnesota police officers when he died in police custody. The protesters laid on the ground during this demonstration, with many putting their hands behind their back. We spoke with protesters at the event to learn the impact the event had on them. So to think that three men would have been sitting on top of me, like we're sitting on top of George Floyd is quite unfathomable. I've had to face racism, my uh, brothers and sisters have, and so until some big change happens, I'll keep, keep fighting. Occupy Spokane organized the event today. They told us they have several events planned. City Council President Brianne Beggs came out to tell the protesters that they do have his support as a fight for change. How about we switch gears now for a minute? We did see a beautiful sunset out there earlier tonight. Thank you everyone for those awesome pictures on our Facebook page. Joined now by meteorologist Thomas Patrick. So Thomas, I want to see those sunsets again, but tomorrow I hear might not be the best night for it. What are you thinking? Yeah, it, it can be hit and miss. It all depends on if the rain can get out of the way, because of course you need a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of cloud cover, just the right mix and the right ingredients and Voila, you can get a beautiful sunset like we had this evening, but I'm actually still tracking a few thunderstorms for tonight. A couple stragglers, if you will. We had one powerful storm that went through Lewiston about three or four hours ago, but still some lightning on the map. So let's pause radar zoom on in, uh, especially close to the Chewila area. So you're going to be hearing some rumbles of thunder within the next 15 to 20 minutes if you're not hearing them already. A little bit off to the south towards the Palouse. Looks like there's a storm right over Pomeroy as well as Steptoe at the moment. So if you hear one or two more rumbles of thunder tonight, don't be surprised, but I think that the lightning is going to be winding down pretty shortly here. Check out this big thunderstorm we had over the Lewis and Clark Valley. This was the severe storm that went through Soton and Lewiston about three or four hours ago. Just a massive storm, a supercell thunderstorm as it is meteorologically call a lot of turbulence in the atmosphere, creating more incredible photos even just a couple hours before sunset. It wasn't the only storm. We saw some lightning out of Moses Lake earlier today as well, so pretty cool stuff. Love seeing all the pictures, but the rain is not through quite yet. So coming up, I'm going hour by hour to tell you when we're going to see the rainfall and when you might still have yet a chance to head outside for this weekend.